Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Casting all your cares upon it, the scripture says. He cares for you. Oh, how he cares. So much he cares. Cares about every problem, every situation in your life. Trust him now. Trust the one who will never disappoint you. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Give him that problem, whatever it is, give it to him. Yes, he's able. He's able to do exceeding abundantly of all you ask or ever can think. Trust him. He'll not fail you, I promise you. He'll never turn away from you, I promise you. He said, I shall never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's his word, his promise. Be at peace, all is well. All is well. He will not let you down. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. Never. Trust Him. Trust Him. Have faith in God. Don't waver, don't weaken. Trust Him. And that problem in your life will be solved on schedule. That problem will be taken care of on schedule. Lift your hands and thank him. He will not be late. It will be right on schedule. That's his word. All of you watching in your homes, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, all social media platforms. He'll never fail us. He'll never fail you. How many are sensing the presence of the Lord here? Yeah. He's among us, saints. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. I shall never leave thee. I shall never forsake thee. I am with you always. That's his promise. You're never alone, not for a second. Someone reverently say, praise the Lord. Now you may be seated. We serve a wonderful and a mighty Lord. And the people said, Amen. Well, I'm going to minister the word right now. So take your Bibles. Let's get in the word. We serve a mighty Redeemer, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. Sweet, sweet Jesus. Don't forget to join... Uh, Partner Connect, oh, dear goodness, I'm having a great time with that. And you know what? The material I'm sharing, I don't share anywhere else. So you really need to be on to see what I'm talking about. I think you've been watching. It's true training in ministry. It's not anything I have taught ever in this class or will ever teach in this class or in, in, in any crusade. This is a, just training for ministry, like raw and you will be blessed, I promise you. All right, tonight I want to minister on something that I think is so important in this hour. Recognizing demonic activity and casting it out of your life and casting it out from anyone near your life. Let me hear an amen. amen. Now, this is important because it's happening so much around us. And bless the Lord, anoint us today. Be our teacher, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and understanding. Give us clarity in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 
I'm hearing some disturbing reports, and I felt it's time for me to address it. Do you believe that pastors have gotten up recently in their churches names, uh, well-known names, and told their pastors not to talk about the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. Fact. This is not say so either. The staff of those churches, some of them left over it. Famous names met privately with their staff and told them not to ever talk about the Holy Spirit because they don't want to lose members. They don't want to offend people. I don't know what planet they're living on. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no faith. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to believe. You cannot even say Jesus is Lord without him behind it. We're not talking about miracles and gifts. We're talking about the Christian life cannot be lived without the Holy Spirit. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Everything God does, he does by the Holy Spirit. And today what we're lacking is the discerning of spirits. What spirit is talking? So when someone gets up and says, don't talk about the Holy Spirit, you know who's behind that. All right. The first chapters of the Bible show us how important. How important it, it's, it's that we recognize who's talking to us. Because what Eve lacked was she did not discern the true identity of the devil. She did not know who was talking to her. And because she failed to discern his true identity, a failure resulted, and the fall was the result that now affects the whole planet. Think about the importance of the gift of discernment. She did not discern the lie, did not know the truth. So right there in the beginning of Genesis, we see the danger when people lack discernment. That's why we are commanded in Scripture. In 1 John 4, would you put that on the screens for the people? 1 John 4, verse 1, and 1 John 4, verse 2, on that on the Scriptures for the people. The Bible tells us this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many, not just some, not just few, many false prophets are gone into the world. And dear goodness, they're all over the place in this hour. Not only back 2,000 years ago. The next verse says, verse 2, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. What he's telling us is that we must know the Spirit of God when he is speaking. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Because at the time, there was a heresy going around, taught and was teaching the opposite. And other doctrines were running around in those days that brought confusion. There is an anointing within, 1 John 2, 27, that protects us from deception. Nothing to do, I've taught on this so many times, nothing to do with the anointing on a ministry or an office. Nothing to do with the gifts of the Spirit. 
In 1 John, John the Apostle talks about this amazing anointing that comes in at the time you and I are born again. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now this anointing is totally different than the anointing of Acts 1.8. Because this anointing deals with the spirit. While the anointing of what? of Acts 1.8 deals with the soul and the body. The anointing that was promised in Acts 1.8 affects the soul and the body, not, not the spirit. Because ye shall receive power, Acts 1.8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses unto me in, in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and, and the world. That anointing is for ministry. But the anointing that I'm talking about is for protection from the demonic. That Anointing, when it comes in you, not on you, say in me, in not, me. On me. not on me. Say the one in me, one in me. is for me. for me. The one on me, one on me. is for somebody, else. for somebody else. Exactly. God anoints you on you so you can minister to someone else, be witnesses uh, to Jerusalem and so forth and Judea and Samaria. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, not in you. Upon you means on you. And then you are witnessing. You are blessing other people's lives. You are touching people's lives. This is for your life. The first John 2, 27, anointing is for your life. Now, the Word of God says that when that, uh, that anointing is within, we cannot be deceived. Amen. It says there's no lie in it. It's the truth. It keeps you grounded in truth. So when we know the Holy Spirit, only then we can know what spirit is talking. Eve did not know the Holy Spirit. That's why she had no clue who was talking to her. Because the devil always comes with a question. Hath God said, are you really sure he said that to you? Remember when he came to the Lord, he said, are you the son of God? If you are, let's see. Always questions. If you are the son of God, come on, turn this stone into bread. Questions, questions, questions. But we answer with the word by the spirit. The word I speak, it's spirit, Jesus said. Now, trying the spirits or discerning the spirits is a gift. Imparted by the Spirit. It's not something you and I can produce mentally. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, may I see it on the screen, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. It's the, the discerning of spirits, uh, plural spirits, uh, three realms. To another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, meaning there's more than one realm. So, God wants us all to have this gift of discerning spirits, because there are three realms. Now, the Bible tells us what these realms are. But let me also explain, it's the ability to see into the spirit world. The spirit world where God is. That's in 2 Kings 6, by the way, 15 through 17. Elisha discerned the Spirit of God behind a vision. And we can look at that now, 2 Kings 6, 2 Kings 6, 15, 16, 17. We, we see the discerning of spirits revealing the Holy Ghost behind it. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, Gone forth, behold, the host compassed the city, both with horses, chariots, and his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? 
This, this dear man did not have the, the gift of discernment. Next verse, please. He answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The servant saw the flesh. Elisha saw the spirit. And then it says what? The next verse. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see what I'm seeing. That he may see, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. Elisha did not have, listen now, Elisha did not have to, he saw it himself. He didn't have to ask the question, please let me see it. He didn't question it himself. It's the young man who said, look at all those chariots and horses of the armies of Syria. Fear struck his life. But Elisha saw beyond that. Now, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see what I'm seeing. And those horses, chariots and horses of fire became visible to the young man. But they were already visible to Elisha in the spirit realm. Elisha didn't have to see that with his physical eyes. Are you listening? He saw in the spirit behind those horses the, the, the armies of God. All that man saw was the horses in the flesh, the army in the flesh. Elisha saw the, the higher plateau, the greater. And then he said, Lord, open his eyes. Let, let, let the man see what I'm saying. Here is a very simple example of the gift of discernment. Into the spirit world, the spirit world of God here. But there's also where in Acts 16, verse 16 through verse 19, where a spirit came after Paul the apostle, and what the spirit said was truth. But he discerned it wasn't the Holy Ghost speaking. So Paul saw the demonic when that spirit was actually speaking truth. Demons sometimes will tell you the truth. But they're, it's, it's, it's a deceiving spirit. There's a lie there. It came to pass as we went to pray at a certain damsel, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Keep next verse, please. The same father Paul and us and Christ, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. That's the truth, all right. Which show unto us the way of salvation. Well, there was no lie in what she said. But Paul the apostle discerned, it's the devil talking. Next verse. And did... And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour because he saw the satanic. So just because someone speaks the truth, it doesn't mean it's the Holy Ghost. You have to discern who's really talking. Because often the truth comes to trick you, to deceive you, to bring you into a place of darkness. So be careful. It's not what you hear uh, that matters. It's what you see that matters Amen. in the spirit. Who's talking back there? Amen. And there is another spirit that often people don't discern properly. And that's the human realm, the human spirit. Isaac missed it. Look at Genesis 27, verse 22. Well, let's begin reading at verse 21. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice of Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not. There he missed it. A man of God can miss it sometimes. We all need the Holy Spirit to give us the true discerning and discernment 
of who is it that's talking to us. He said, I, the voice is Jacob. But he missed it. Even the voice did not do the job. But the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother's Esau's, like his brother's Esau's. Now here, you see Eve not discerning it was the devil talking. Now you have Elisha telling the Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Discerning the Holy Ghost. Paul discerned the wrong spirit in that lady who spoke truth. Three rounds. You can discern when God is speaking. You can discern when the enemy is speaking. You can discern when the world is speaking. Only by the Spirit. On tomorrow's program, Pastor Benny Hinn continues his message on recognizing demonic activity and casting it out of your life. He'll explain the spiritual weapons we have been given to confront and defeat the enemy. Don't miss this important teaching. And in just a moment, Pastor Benny will make a major announcement that you must hear. A brand new 24-hour-per-day network for you. So stay tuned. Pastor Benny Hinn will pray for you in Israel during his upcoming tour. The Bible contains many examples of supernatural increase, which took place in the land of miracles. And this is the time to release your faith for finances. Mail a prayer request today as a point of contact for your specific need. And Pastor Benny will take it with him to Galilee, where Jesus created miracles of multiplication, along with financial supply from unexpected sources. He'll also go to the Western Wall in Jerusalem, the place from which God said He would always hear the prayers of His people. It is important that you act now by mailing your specific prayer request along with a financial seed as a tangible expression of your faith to activate your financial harvest. Your miracle is on the way right today. I pray our wonderful Jesus will bless every one of you today. A very exciting announcement. I am so thrilled. We are starting a network just for you. Now listen to me. A network that is your network. We're calling it Atmosphere for Healing Network. 24 hours a day. Online. On social media. It is for you. And it is yours, 24 hours a day, focusing on the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, the mighty third person of the Trinity and his work in our lives, teaching programs, healing programs, signs and wonders programs from here and around the world, glorifying our wonderful Jesus, the Son of Almighty God. Think about having a 24-hour-a-day network around the world online in English, and then some hours will be reserved for Spanish, for French, and other languages. We want to reach the world with the power of God 24 hours a day. And other programmers will be on joining me. The new upcoming healing evangelist of the world, Europe, Asia, here in the U.S., in Canada, South America, around the world, God is using some powerful people right now, and they'll all be on the network with me. Different programming, mighty flow of the Holy Spirit, and you are a part of all that. Now, we have hired a company, a very professional company, to do this for us. And they require that we pay them right now so they can build the platform. To build a platform for this network that begins this December, the first week of December of 2016, they're requiring $250,000 to prepare everything, to build the platform. All we're going to do is supply content, supply programming, and I need your help because this is for you and it's your network. Remember that. 
if 2,500 of you will give $100 each, it's done. Think about a whole network to launch it is only $250,000. In the old days, it was in the millions. Today, it's so much easier. It's so much quicker. It's so much cheaper. And to maintain it is much cheaper than that, too. But to launch it, it's going to cost $250,000. That's all. And I'm asking you to join and become a part of this very exciting very life-changing Holy Ghost network around the world. We need the power of the Holy Spirit today more than ever. Because the more we know him, the more we know Jesus. He's the one who testifies and glorifies Jesus. Remember, it's all about Jesus. It's all about the Master. For it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord himself. So what I want you to do right now is right there online, you can send your gift to Benihin Ministries at benihin.org. There's a number for you to call. You can call that number and do it right on the phone. Or you can text it or online. Do it right now. Listen, I want to believe God with you right now that the Lord will bless you time and time and time and time again for what you will do for him. There is a great need today in the body of Christ for the Holy Spirit. In many circles, he's unknown and he's, in fact, in some places, unwanted. But we want him. We want him with all our hearts. For without him, there is no reality. Jesus cannot be real without the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives. Without him, the word of God has no power. But with him, it's all power. With him and only with him. There is power that will change our lives and the lives of millions around the world. Jesus said, I give you power. I will endure you with power. Whose power? The Holy Ghost. We need him more than ever today. And I believe this network, God will use it to bless millions around the world. So please, will you right now sow that seed of $100 only and help me launch this network that begins December, the first week of December of 2016, I want to pray with you. Father, for everyone, Lord, right now who gives, bless them mightily with a mighty harvest. In Jesus' glorious name, meeting every need for your glory. And God's people said, amen and amen. I want to send you the Ark of the Covenant. You're looking right now at the beautiful Ark of the Covenant. I want to send to you a gift, a thank you from me to you. Make sure today to send your gift, and I'll send you this gift right away to say thank you. Do it today. And remember, God is going to use you to check the world for His glory. The name of Jesus, exalted now and forever. I will be waiting to hear from you. God bless you.